Thank you very much for joining me. Um, we're going to go through this sort of session this afternoon. Uh, very quickly, as I said, it is being recorded. So if you do not want your face to appear in the recording, um, please do turn off your webcam. Obviously, there's no uh, requirement to be on. Um, the link for this recording will be sent around after the session for you to watch back if you do want to. And of course, to share amongst colleagues if you see a benefit in that. Uh, so please do feel free to do that. And the recording itself is going to be hosted on our EdTech page. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may not. Don't worry, I'll provide a link to it once again, and it's going to be hosted there via YouTube. But the video will ultimately end up on. So, um, so yeah, it is being recorded. So just be mindful of that, please. Um, quick thing on who I am. That's a lovely promo shot they use for me. That's back before I didn't have the DIY haircut in the garden um, during lockdown. Um, I'm officially director of whole school ICT and computer science. It's a very fancy way of saying that I wear two hats. I am the head of computer science at British Island Catholic College with that responsibility, but I'm also probably more in line with this programme, director of our whole, sc whole school ICT approach. So for example, I am responsible for technology in regards to teaching and learning. So things like Microsoft Teams and using platforms such as Kahoot across the school. I am the lead for the EdTech Demonstrator programme at St Albans and Bishop Tower, and I am a teacher. I like to highlight that point because I myself have attended many webinars where I'm being told by somebody who hasn't worked in a classroom for 10 years how to work in a classroom. So uh, in normal circumstances, I am every day in the classroom teaching students. And hopefully those of you that have spoke to me previously, or in some cases tomorrow, I am happy to help where I can. As they please do feel free to use that email address as a Q&A session almost. If you've got any questions regarding the use of Teams, or indeed educational technology, please do drop an email at me and I'll do whatever I can in terms of helping you uh, with that question. So as I say, please use me as a resource for whatever better way of putting it. Um, the reason this, this CPD session or this webinar is titled as such is, this is my opinion, I'm very much a believer that the best CPD for teachers is one that is done by teachers. And I think one of the things that we've lost during lockdown is the the informal chats at the face-to-face -face CPD sessions in between post-it note activities and the, the lunchtime, the coffee breaks, those sort of little golden nuggets that we pick up from each other that are very useful and very applicable to our sort of daily teaching lives. Now, with that in mind, I'm very, um, very much pushing for this session to be somewhat of a show and tell towards the end, and you'll see what I mean as and when we get there. It's very much aimed as a session, as a session where I'm not consistently talking at you guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them during the presentation, after the presentation. I'm more than happy to stick around beyond the allotted hour and go into detail on some things if that's beneficial for you. OK, so that's the vision, the idea behind these sessions. Um, if you haven't seen it already, uh, I, mean, I believe many of you have. We do have a PDF guide that we've produced uh, presenting live with Microsoft Teams. Now, this guide, once again, has been produced in house. Most of it's been done by myself, in truth. And this guide, it's a couple of slides, uh, pages of it there, goes through the various features of Teams that can and we believe should be utilised in the delivery, right from everything to how you can share a PowerPoint and stop students having their own control over it, through to how you can edit your own videos that you've recorded and then share them using the stream platform. So if you haven't seen it, I will provide a link for it into the chat at the end of this session. So hopefully that guide can be of some use for you. Quick agenda for this session this afternoon. I'm going to go through the, the process at Bishop Chandler. So sort of how we got to where we are and then how we present a live lesson. Once again, not saying we're the, we're the, the best way of doing it, but it's, it's our way of doing it. Point two, things that have worked for us. So looking at things that we've utilised in teams that are very beneficial for us in our sort of live lesson strategy. Uh, three, some of the challenges that we found and where possible how we overcame them. It's been sort of a unique time and there's been unique challenges that have faced us in regards to these live lessons. Four, I'll touch upon briefly our safeguarding approach and how we've sort of managed that and how we're we're uh, going with that going forward. Uh, five, as I mentioned, the, the sort of show and tell elements where I sort of open the floor up as such and we look at things that have worked for us collectively as a group, things that maybe haven't worked for you, but the hope being that somebody on the call has had it work for them and they can contribute in that way. Point six, questions, of course, please do ask questions throughout the session, but if any questions you've got that are left to the end, Feel free to ask them then. And the tangent. Now, the tangent is something I always add to my sessions, which is an earlier somebody came up with something brilliant they wanted to look at or to demonstrate or for me to sort of share on the screen. If that happens this afternoon, we'll do exactly the same again, which is where we want to explore something further, but it's not part of the agenda. For people that want to stay on towards the end of the conversation, we can sort of 
diverge into that at that point in time. So that's kind of the, the rundown of this session. I mean, please do get involved where possible. As I say, you should have your hand up tool and also the chat should be available for you. Um, please utilise it. Please talk to each other while I'm talking. Please talk to me whilst I'm talking. If you want to use the microphones, please just raise your hand and obviously kind of patronise you. We can enter into the conversation that way. So yeah, please do get involved as and where you see fit and where you want to. But unless there's any immediate questions from the outset, I'm sort of going to get started on this. Perfect, so nice to just join in. Excellent. So as I say, I'm going to get sort of started on the sort of the first item of the agenda, which was the sort of process that we went through at Bishop Channeler. Now, back in March, which seems like an eternity away now, given the current climate, March the 18th, as we sort of got told by the government, we were going into lockdown on the 20th and, or post the 20th, sorry, and our immediate response was to utilise the school website as a platform to sort of share and disseminate information and resources to our students. Very quickly, we realised that in doing that, whilst we were meeting or ticking a box, so to speak, of putting the work uh, in an accessible place, what we weren't doing, what we weren't, weren't seeing was good engagement between student and teacher. We were asking students to email teachers work they completed or asking them to email questions they had. And like everything with school, the, the students that were emailing us were the ones that were never going to be a concern anyway, because they are able students and willing students. And the flip side of that is the students that we weren't hearing from were very much the ones that we were concerned with in terms of progress, not only just during lockdown, but during sort of, you know, normal school times as well, so to speak. So we very quickly realised that we're going to need a platform or platforms that can support us going forward. Now, Teams we've had for a number of years as part of our sort of Office 365 or Microsoft 365 as it is now subscription. And we'd used it previously for staff to staff, but we never really utilised it for staff to students beyond sharing resources and past paper resources, etc., with certain groups. Um, so that's one aspect of it. Um, class charts, which is the other one, which isn't the focus today, but just sort of our journey. Uh, we utilised quite a lot at Key Stage 3 as a homework setting platform. and the joy for us there in terms of the difference we're seeing between that and the website. One, we can see who is and who isn't engaging, but two, we can also provide feedback and have that continual conversation with the students. Moving slightly forward from there then, it was kind of a sort of, if it was someone else joining, it was kind of agreed upon that we would look to use uh, Microsoft Teams as our sort of live lesson delivery platform as it kind of became clear that the lockdown wasn't going to last a couple of weeks, it's going to be for the foreseeable future. And that's where we got to the point of using or looking at developing policies, both sort of software policies, but also safeguarding policies and strategies for live lessons to allow us to a position where we are now, which is all groups are experiencing across Key Stage 4 and 5 at least, at least some content through a Microsoft live lesson. Just quickly for those that have just joined us, thank you very much for joining us. Um, the session has been recorded since the start, so you haven't missed a lot in truth, but there will be an ability to catch up after the session and go through certain stuff or certain features are off, sorry. Um, our live lesson approach then is very much this. Teachers, myself included here, we're given autonomy with our live lessons in terms of how they should look, how they should flow and in terms of length. We as a school don't prescribe how long a lesson should last and nor what the contents of it should be. So for example, some members of staff, myself included here, are using them to try and present as close as they can to uh, to mimic a face-to-face -face lesson. Whereas I know of other colleagues that are using them as sort of tutorials slash lectures, that kind of sort of like I'm doing now, really, somebody talking at the, the, the members of the of the chat. Some are using them as informal dropping sessions for students. So they're setting assignments and then going, right, if you need support, I'll be available between this hour and this hour on this particular day. And many, now that I'm doing the same as well, are combining and adapting these options to suit their needs and suit their classes. So the overarching point really is that we don't prescribe how teachers do their live lessons. It'd be very difficult, we believe, to do that given the sort of varied um, technical abilities, the varied uh, wants to do a live lesson, but also the varied subjects, some are useful live, some maybe aren't so much. So we don't prescribe in that sense. What we do prescribe though is a, an approach in regards to sort of safeguarding, safeguarding and the time setting. So for example, let's say I've got a lesson this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon as it will be now for computing between uh, one and two. The first thing that I have to do as a member of staff in my session is I have to set it in accordance to their normal timetable slots to try and avoid sort of clashes with other teachers 
once in the same student at the same time. But the session doesn't just run from one till two. As the teacher, I join that uh, session about 15, 10 minutes prior to it and immediately start recording that session. Now, the reason I start the recording immediately is we want to capture any one to one or any teacher to student um, interaction that happens purely from a sort of safeguarding perspective. So the recording starts the moment that I press start on the meeting, essentially. One o'clock comes and I'll show you these later on, but we present to every group, every teacher does this and every student will have seen them numerous times now. The our expectations slide, it's very similar to the expectations you've set out at the start of an academic year, but they're seeing it continuously for us. I've got a rough two o'clock finish and the reason it's a rough two o'clock finish is once again, we don't prescribe how long these lessons should last. I've done lessons that have gone on for an hour and 10 and some that have lasted sort of 30 minutes, 35 minutes. It's completely teacher uh, discretion there. But what isn't teacher discretion as such is the post session. So the teacher has to end the meeting, not just leave. That's the three dots in the middle of the, the teams and then end meeting. If I did that now, for example, all 16 of you would be kicked from this particular meeting. If I just left, all 16 of you would remain, but I wouldn't be here. So obviously we don't want that situation. We stop the recording only as and when every student has left the conversation or left the meeting. And then that recording is then shared with students in that group, irrespective of whether or not they attend the live lesson. We still have some students who, for whatever reason, their parents haven't give, uh, haven't given the school permission for them to partake in live lessons, which is, you know, that, that's their prerogative. But we still want them to be able to access the content that we've gone through. So we, we share that link irrespective of whether or not they've attended. Probably one of the, the few silver linings of this has been that because we are recording sessions, Students for the first time, if they need to, that they can relive part of a lesson. Obviously, face to face, hopefully not a, no, normally a need for it, but they they can't have that ability. They don't have that ability. So one of the few silver linings has been that. What I'm going to do, because I'm aware I've just rambled on in my little black country tone there for a while, is pause for a moment. Is there any question on or questions rather? Sorry, on Bishop Chandler's approach to live lessons there. As I say, please do get involved with this. The, the, the idea for me is that it's, it's teachers talking to teachers. So any questions on any of that? Yeah, Luke, <laughs> Peter Hammond here, John Maysell. Hi, Peter. Sorry. So, yeah, go for it. Hi, just a quick question. Um, kind of a, not a logistical question, more than a technical question. How did you square recording your lessons with your teachers and how long have you done that for? Because I know... Uh, union guidelines had varied, haven't they? Uh, but sometimes they've been quite uh, stringent about that. No, absolutely. It's, it's, it's a good question. The complete transparency is we still have members of staff who, rightly so, and it's their choice, aren't engaging with live lessons. What we've done then to try and support those staff and obviously indirectly their students who perhaps would benefit from a live lesson is we've demonstrated programs such as Loom or the ability to record in PowerPoint. So although they're not part of a live session like we are now, they are still providing students with a little bit more of an engaging um, activity or an engaging delivery of the content rather than just sending them a PDF link or a particular exercise on a website. So there is unfortunately no way of mandating it and nor should there be. But um, for those that aren't doing live lessons or wouldn't feel comfortable doing live lessons, we have looked at alternatives, which I can obviously share the resources that we're using to teach that or deliver those uh, with the group as well. I hope that sort of answers your question somewhat. No, no, thank you, Luke. It's just I was thinking specifically about the recording, because I know that's been something that say unions have been fairly strident on and um, I know we've had some concerns from colleagues at my school about that. I wonder how you kind of squared that. And I, I obviously you've used a safeguarding argument. Yeah, no, no, very, very much. I mean, the sort of the two arguments that we use, I think I've touched upon, obviously safeguarding is probably the biggest overarching one, but actually for the students, it's that ability to rewatch the content. Um, we were very upfront with our members of staff. And as I say, there's still staff now that aren't doing live lessons for potentially this reason. We said from the outset that irrespective of how long your lesson is or what the content is it's going to be recorded from a safeguarding perspective and that's not up for debate there is absolutely no stigma though on any member of staff that doesn't want to do a live lesson so you know obviously with the unions and rightly so you know expressing concerns it's very much opt-in for members of staff at our school rather than you will be doing x y and z this week obviously the expectation that they're setting work is still there but whether or not it's delivered for a live lesson is their prerogative really 
So just to conclude then, yeah, if they're live, they're recorded. Yeah, that, that, that's it. Yeah, the, the, there's no two ways about it. It's, if you want to do live lessons, brilliant, excellent. The students will benefit from it, but it's been recorded. Thanks, Luke. No worries. As I say, I mean, I'll, I'll just add, add a caveat onto that. I mean, we've done live lessons now for about sort of four or five weeks. We've never had a, a, a safeguarding issue yet. And I have to use the word yet, unfortunately. And we've seen confidence build. Uh, with the recording of live lessons. I myself was relatively, um, uh, um, you know, in my first live lesson. I think as time goes on, staff got used to the platform and the, the sort of the systems and students are the same. So it's confidence builds as well. So one thing that we found really beneficial was sort of staff to staff uh, CPD. And for want of a better way of putting it, mimicking real life in the sense that I had m members of staff drop into my computing lessons that are live just to sort of see what I'm doing with my students. So th that, that's how it build confidence, so to speak. Any other questions on what I've just gone through there? As I say, please do get involved as and when you see fit. It's kind of the sort of the idea behind these sessions. I see you have the chat as well if you don't want to necessarily use your microphone. But if not, I will move on then. Okay, folks. So uh, some of this could very much be sort of preaching to the converted here, but uh, sort of things that have worked for us um, as I'm doing now, presenting a PowerPoint as we're in a normal classroom. This is something students are very used to. They're used to a teacher going through a um, uh, presentation. So I've decided to stop. I've just got somebody in the chat, unfortunately, K Rowles, I don't know your first name, but um, do you like to guess? We've had more students engaging more so through live lessons than when we were recording PowerPoints at the beginnings. Yeah, I echo that. I think the live lessons, we've seen two benefits from them, which I'm, I'm going to come on to later on, which is obviously one, as you mentioned, the engagement from students. They seem a lot more willing to get involved with a live lesson than they do just sort of watching a PowerPoint in their own time. But from a sort of well-being and a mental well-being perspective, we've seen a benefit to our students, which I'll come on to as well. But, you know, for, thank you for your point. It re-emphasises the, the benefit that these can give. But, yeah, as I say, the, the using a PowerPoint presentation, they're, they're used to. As I say, that's just some aspects of normality for them, which is a teacher walking through a presentation for them. Um, the hands-up tool, obviously, many of us are probably familiar with it now. Probably had umpteen team meet teams meetings in the past couple of months and weeks. Um, one, obviously, a student can use it to gain attention from the teacher. And then we have a system in our school and they're kind of used to it now where students are all muted. They raise their hand if they want to use their microphone to either answer a question that's been pointed at them or to pose a question to the group or to the teacher. But we also we found some use and it's limited use, but some use for it as a very sort of basic uh, binary res response. So, for example, to either garner understanding, you know, raise your hand if you understand it, leave it down if you don't or for very sort of low state questioning. I, for example, as you probably guessed, teach computing. And one of the things that we do quite a lot of is binary conversion. I will put a number on the board and go, is this number, um, the number 15 converted into binary? Use your hand up as yes and your hand down as no. So it's a very sort of basic yay or nay system as well, which we, we can sort of fudge it to be somewhat, which it does work. Um, we've touched on recording a lesson, as I say, sharing that recording. I mentioned it briefly earlier, the silver lining being that possibly for the first time really ever, students can watch a lesson back if there's a bit of content they want to go over again, which is quite nice. But the other thing that we also do is, although obviously we're an EdTech demonstrator school and we're sort of not pushing Microsoft Teams, but we're utilising it quite a lot, it doesn't mean that we've stopped utilising other platforms or we've tried to shoe shoehorn in a Microsoft solution if an alternative exists that's better. So, for example, I was a massive fan of Kahoot. I'm a massive fan of Kahoot. And I use it pretty much every other week or every other lesson with my students. I'm still doing it live. I'm still hosting a live Kahoot quiz or setting a remote learning quiz through Kahoot and using those platforms. So we're still using other platforms as and when we want to, and as and when we need to as part of our sort of practice. One of the most interesting things that we, we usually go through in this session then is sort of challenges that we found and how we've overcome them or overcame them. Um, one of the ones that I didn't foresee when I first started pushing this or pushing the use of Teams at Chandler was the, and I probably should have done really, is the anxiety that exists when you're part of a virtual lesson compared to a real life lesson. I always use my year 12 computing group as my guinea pigs with these kind of things because they're a lovely bunch of children. They're very much sort of grade seven, eight, nine at GCSE, you know, very nice students. 
in the normal classroom setting, they're absolutely fine having teachers pose questions at them and bouncing ideas in a recall knowledge uh, exercise, etc. The moment I tried it for the first time in a live lesson on Teams, I had students pretty much point blank refusing to answer questions and you know not turning the microphone on, not engaging in the chat. And I've had some students even leave um, when they're asked a question directly because they, they they didn't want to be sort of put on the spot like they previously do in a classroom setting. So I did notice a huge spike, or we noticed a spike in um, anxiety among students because of the new medium, the new platform they're using to engage with teacher questioning. There is obviously, of course, no one size fits all here in terms of uh, navigating that. What we found works for us as a school is reassurance prior to a session. Uh, prior to a session. Now, naturally, it becomes a lot easier the more you do. For example, that one student that pretty much left as I asked him a question, just spoke to him one on one via email, you know, reassured him that I wouldn't be asking him any direct questions in the future, that we cried the microphone at least. And then giving students an opt out when directing questions. So, for example, we probably naively started this process by saying we want you to use the microphone to engage, but then actually we, we opened the chat up to them and we gave them the option of using the chat to pose a question or pose an answer because some of them prefer that rather than using the microphone to discuss and talk. So as I say, it's quite a unique challenge we found or perhaps shouldn't have been unique, but one that we sort of very quickly came into contact here, came into contact with through these live lesson deliveries. This one's quite an interesting one. Um, even though they have technology at home to access it, the vast majority of our students, we've sort of surveyed them, they are using either a tablet device or a smartphone to access live lessons. Now, there's two issues with that. One, if you're on a phone, naturally the, the sort of screen real estate is a lot smaller than what you'll have on a desktop computer or even a laptop or even an iPad in that sense. And if you are using uh, iOS to access it, if you use the chat feature, it does cover the presentation screen. So for example, if you're accessing on a, on a mobile, device, mobile device now and you go into the chat, you won't be able to see the presentation that I'm currently sort of sharing. So, and that's just, there is no technological cure for that, but we found some sort of methods that we'd like to utilize that benefit the students. So one of the things that we do use Teams for, we set work through the assignments feature, but we've got into the habit now of setting work that can be completed on paper and photographed. For the simple reason that if they can complete it via computer, great, it saves them writing, it saves us having to try and read their handwriting. But if they can't and they've only got a smartphone, they can write out their answers like they normally would in a lesson photograph it and submit the photograph as their work. It just removes that them trying to write type an essay on an iPhone keyboard, for example. Um, probably guess well, one of the things we have to do here, we have to provide time like a webinar for students to pose questions and respond to them. We don't have, I'm just going to preaching the converted here, we don't have the visual cues like we used to. We don't have the students sort of, you know, nodding in agreement or feigning a sort of, I don't understand that kind of expression that we used to have in the classroom. So it's given them time that perhaps we don't normally do in a classroom to think, right, have you got any questions? Do you need to um, think of a response before I come to you kind of thing? So it might sound really straightforward, but these are just sort of pitfalls that we went through at the start of this process. And of course, as I say, this one's tricky, but encourage microphone use where possible. That voice interaction makes things a lot easier than sort of waiting on the chat, because interestingly, this chat feature that we have in Teams unlike pretty much any sort of chat that I'm aware of in existence, doesn't tell you if somebody's currently typing. So for example, if I ask somebody in this group now to answer a particular question, I don't know whether or not they're actually doing it until they've actually pressed the enter and I can see their answer. It doesn't tell me that, you know, so-and-so is typing a response or there's no little three dots moving like there's on an iMessage, which is quite, quite, a, uh, quite an omission, I believe, from Microsoft, but they're constantly updating it. This is my personal experience from what I found is as a teacher, although I'm fully aware that I'm talking to you guys now, I'm not used to this much teacher talk in a lesson. Um, to me personally, my normal classroom looks like this. I've got an hour uh, sessions at our school. We all have some teacher led questioning at the start, usually a knowledge recall activity, then some introduction of a new content or a new topic. I then give the pupils time in a lesson to engage individually with a task, be it individually or you know working in pairs, for example during which I'm you know, circulating the room, sat at the front like I might be doing, and then I'll finish with some sort of teacher-led questioning at the end. So that could once again be either a Kahoot quiz or something along them lines, could be whiteboards, for example. What I found in my initial trials when I first started doing live lessons was this. 
course, I attempted teacher-led questioning to limited success. As I say, students weren't really willing at that stage to get involved. And even now, it's, it's trying to coax them to use the microphone facility and sort of engage at that level. But then because it's not a normal classroom, I'm not going, right, here's your exercise, there's 15 minutes, do it. There was a lot of teacher-led introduction of content, so a lot of teacher talk, which isn't inherently bad, but is very different to my normal practice. So I, I found that quite jarring to start with. What my online classroom now looks like on my online lesson is this. There's teacher-led questioning to a degree. As I said, just through practice, we've got better at it. The sort of the students are getting more confidence, and as of the staff for that matter. Still a lot more teacher-led introduction and teacher talk than previous. There's a lot more of that just through the nature of online delivery. But what I'm now doing, I make a point of making my lessons, even if my content delivery only lasts 35 minutes, the lesson time remains an hour. So for example, I will, during the lesson, insist that they start it with pen and paper to hand or pencil and paper, whatever they might have, and then set an activity, say 35 minutes in, but I'll remain on the call like I am now um, until the end of that hour. The idea being that if they have a question or they have um, anything they're not sure about, they can come back to me. It also means that once 15 minutes have uh, elapsed, for example, I can go, right, here's a solution on the screen. Let's discuss that further. So I'm, I'm now starting to use parts of my lesson as I would in a real classroom, which is there's an activity. I'm going to be essentially silent and muted as it is in technology terms for 15 minutes if you need me raise your hand or use the chat feature so i'm essentially sitting in the virtual classroom whilst they're getting on with something as well and we found that beneficial we've meant we found that one it helps us sort of emulate a real classroom to, uh, to a better degree but also students like it because they can complete work under normal circumstances i.e they've got a teacher in the virtual room to ask a question so if they don't quite understand it so that's kind of what sort of changed in my approach. And then finally, before I, start, I sort of do stop rambling, let you know if it's these questions again, uh, the whiteboard tool. Now, the whiteboard feature that's built into um, uh, Microsoft Teams, for want of a better way of putting it, I find to be a little bit of a novelty. Now, the reason I say that is there's only four colours available. So if you've got more than sort of four students in a meeting, it's hard to assign them an individual colour, but it's not possible. And I think like many of us experienced when we got our first computer, trying to draw anything that resembles anything tangible uh, using a mouse is very tricky. So I did, for example, being a computer science teacher, logic gate diagrams, and they're uneligible. You, you couldn't quite see, it's not their fault, it's just drawing with a mouse is a very challenging uh, experience. They're also from a sort of safeguard perspective, there's no ownership of drawing. You can't tell, for example, who's drawn what on that whiteboard. So if you have a student that wanted to derail it by drawing something inappropriate or just scribbling across the screen, you don't know who's done that. So it's a, a tool that in terms of that kind of use, it, I believe has limited use, but in a small group where you may have four students max, there is some uh, use for it. What we do see a lot of use for the whiteboard is we've got teachers at our school that uh, through a number of years ago now still have access to graphics tablets. Now, graphics tablets, if they're plugged in and working, means that the teacher, for want of a better way of putting it, can actually emulate a whiteboard. So they're able to, our math teachers, for example, they can work through a question real time with the students and the students are watching them do the at the board working. I checked earlier, graphics tablets, they start at around 18, 20 pound on Amazon. Now, as to how effective the cheap models are compared to the, obviously, the, the higher end, I don't know. But I believe for the use that we're likely looking at using them for, they, they could be useful in a classroom or a virtual classroom setting. So I know teachers that are using it and they're using it to good effect, particularly in maths where they're demonstrating at the board exercises. I'm aware that I've rambled on quite a lot there. So what I'm going to do once again is pause for a moment. I'm going to in a live lesson, actually. Uh, if there's any questions or any sort of queries about what I've just gone through, if someone wants to add something that they've got done similar, please feel free. I believe mean, this is that Monday afternoon. It's just, yeah, let's get, let's get for a webinar, guys, and we can get off. But um, no, as I say, please, please do ask any questions that you do have. As I say, at any point during this sort of session, please.
please sort of ask questions, inquire about something. I've got one in the chat, I believe, which is great. Is it possible to use tools such as Notebook? Presumably, Richard or Rich, please forgive me. I presume you mean in, in a li in a live lesson setting. Yeah, it, it is possible. You have to add, have it uh, added as the tab. Now, what you can do, for example, you, you'll be able to do it actually yourself now while you're sort of on the app, is down the left hand side, although I'm in a meeting, I, I've still got access to my activity, chat, teams, assignments. Whilst I'm live, I can still go into a team and interact with the notebook feature. So yes, you, you can do it. Perfect, no worries. Um, I'm going to continue then. Um, so safeguarding, which has been, well, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Um, P Trigg, unfortunately, I can't see your first name, so apologies, but um, ask a really good question. Um, can you mute particular in students? You can, yes. Now, at the moment, you won't be able to mute each other or mute me because the way I set up this presentation or this session is that if you look at the attendees or participants list, you'll see there's one presenter who's myself. And then there's attendees, which obviously the 15 of you that are currently with me this afternoon. Now, as the presenter, I have the ability to mute all, or I also have the ability to mute individual students. So to answer your question directly, yes, you can. So it's under note, you use a lot of the three dots next to the, to the student's name, and you can just mute that particular participant. And it, as a presenter, it does mute them for everybody in the chat. So you can't hear them and nobody else can as well. So we had it useful. I had somebody who was on a live lesson who wanted a bit, they'd left them like they weren't given an answer, but they're somebody in the house was in the vacuum at the same time. And people don't expect to having a live lesson, they do appear sometimes. So, yeah. so please continue to ask questions in the chat or obviously hand up and we can do the microphone chat. Um, Safeguarding then. Now, this is probably one of the sort of the biggest things that I think every school has to overcome or uh, will have to overcome recently is the the safeguarding around the use of live lessons. Now, if you haven't seen it already, once again, I'll, I'll link to it in the um, in the chat at the end of the session. We produced a sort of two, three page, very sort of uh, example uh, guide. Uh, I'm going to come to that question in just a moment's time. Uh, thank you. I can't think it's Mr. or Mrs. Myers or Ms. Myers, but thank you very much. I'll come to it in a second. Um, this guide has an example. It's purely an example, as I say, please apply it to your own school settings. An example of both pupil and staff expectations for live lesson delivery. Now, for example, from a student perspective, it's everything from letting them know that it's recorded at the start of every lesson and showing those slides at the start of every lesson. Dress code being appropriate for learning. So, for example, we've got some students in year 12 who rightly so um see a benefit in having their webcam on they believe it uh, enhances their experience of the live lesson we encourage that but um we want them sat in an appropriate setting uh, in appropriate clothing so for example no sort of lounge on your bed in your pajamas attending a live lesson your webcam on if your webcam's off we don't know but obviously none of that it's the same for staff once again preaching to teachers here preaching to the converted but it's for example as a member of staff being appropriately dressed i mean for our school we don't mandate that you be in smart dress I mean me being in a t-shirt is absolutely fine but having an appropriate background so for example don't be sat in front of your washing line or sat in front of a drinks cabinet for argument's sake so it's, it's just little things like that uh, um, I can see I'm going to come to two things in, in, in the chat here because they're both relevant um, please forgive me N Myers as I say I don't know uh, your first name can students invite other students to the classroom if they are an attendee, no, they won't be able to. Obviously, if the meeting's set up so they just have the, the same uh, level of privileges as the presenter, then yes. Obviously, please be mindful of how you're setting up the meetings. And to answer, I believe it's Donald. It is Donald. Thank you. Hi, Donald. Uh, we have four students' video to be off by using policies for safeguarding reasons. Absolutely. It's it's very much a, a school by school approach. We will not mandate, I will not mandate and sit here and say to you guys, this is one way, this, this is the only way of doing it. Uh, with year 10, we've very much gone with the idea that your video is off. Hi, Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. Yep. Uh, but with year 12, we've given them the option uh, going forward. We may, you know, readdress that later down the line, but it's very much school by school and what works for you. 
what we did do, uh, which I probably should touch upon here, is with all the students that are engaging in live lessons, we did do a parental survey to one, um, let them know what was going on, obviously with the intention, and then two, to get permission. So we've currently got roughly two or three students across our entire Key Stage 5 cohort who don't have permission to partake in live lessons, and therefore if they do join one, we just ha unfortunately have to kick them out straight away, but they don't, so we're okay as such. Uh, just sort of what I was going through, these are the slides that we show to students um, at the start of the lesson. As I say, once again, just purely an example, it's just our setting, and we're not saying that this is the only way or is the way you should be doing it. Um, it's just highlighting to the students. They've seen these numerous times now, so they, they're getting used to it. It's like when you do your expectation, expectations of a new year group at the start of an academic year. They're so used to these now. It's kind of just normal practice. They all join with their microphones off. It just sort of um, uh, da -da -da, stops that issue happening. And as I mentioned, being you know suitable learning environments at home with a background, but also learning resources, having the paper and pen to hand to sort of engage with the lesson as well. You can see here, for the example, at the bottom, it says with year 10, when joining a lesson, your camera must be off. Year 12, that is, that is the only difference between those two slides that we show. And we're finding as we go along, we're actually mandating less and less with year 10 that they have to have their camera off, just because, as I said, some students are benefiting from a wellbeing perspective of sort of being visual, and they, they, they enjoy that aspect of it. But I'd say 99% of the students don't have cameras on full stop. Um, got a question from Donald in the chat. Is it possible to force students as attendees? So to save teachers having to do it for each lesson? This is what we've inquired about. As of yet, our school and our, our tech team are under the impression that the answer is no, unfortunately. As a teacher, you have to go into meeting options every time you schedule a live lesson. Going forward, the response that they got when they asked the, the Office 365 team is that it's, it's a feature that they're looking to include in a, in a soon to be rolled out edition. Oh, it is. Oh, it is possible. Donald, I'm going to have to talk to you at the end of this. Apparently, it is possible. Um, Donald, can I be really cheeky? Would you mind sort of telling us how that's doable, please? Yeah, it's hidden from the policy. It's not actually visible the policies and the admin thing at the um, that your tech admins can see. It, it's yeah. uh, through a PowerShell script only. Oh, right. So there's a PowerShell magic formula that you need to do you may have just saved us or oh, my school in particular a hell of a lot of time so i do appreciate that yeah big time um, save yeah i can imagine turn all students to attend, and presumably it just recognizes them through their email accounts and forces them to be an attendee by default yeah every, every student will be an attendee to every meeting they attend so Excellent. That, that is most helpful, Donald. And thank you for correcting me. I, I didn't believe it was possible, so thank you. I can punt the, the magic formula in an email. You can spread the word. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And so, um, as I say, safeguarding. There we go. We learned something new myself there. Um, as I say, we do obviously force our students are attendees. But it's going to be a lot easier now going forward, but they are attendees, so they can't interact with the presentation. How we don't want them to, you know, invite other people to the meetings. Obviously, we've kind of been doing it as we're going, going on there. Is there any other questions regarding sort of the safeguard implementation that we've, we've sort of gone for at Bishop Chandler? Or perhaps, in particular, you know, perhaps your own setting? I'm watching the chat. See anything for such no. Okay. Right, it's um, probably the dreaded part for people uh, because obviously you've been relatively quiet since afternoon. This bit. So, as I say, the idea behind this session when I set it up was that it was going to be a webinar where people hopefully got something from it by talking to other schools or, you know, like myself and Donald has just done there, I've learned something new by talking to somebody outside of my own organisation. And it's basically looking at things that perhaps you've got something that you've been using in your school since lockdown, or, you know, as a piece of ed tech, be it Teams or something else, that you think is really beneficial and actually you'd like to spread the word on it. So, for example, I'll make a start. One of the things that we 
uh, we're very cautious of, obviously this is in relation to what Donald and myself have just discussed with the, the attendees, is originally, obviously, we were very much, we want every student to be an attendee. However, as time went on, especially in my sort of year 12 computing group, we realised there was a benefit for them to being able to share their screen every now and then. So, for example, one of the things we do in computing, we do a lot of something called pseudocode, so fake code. And I will go, right, here's a task, write some code for it. And under normal circumstances in a classroom, I'd go around the room and I'd look at some people, uh, some students work and sort of highlight good examples. Now, once again, it requires that the students want to get involved with this, but we've got some students now who once they've done an activity are, are relatively happy to share their screen, share their document and show us what they've been doing. So I don't know, obviously, probably going to be a question for yourself here, Donald, for me actually, is if they are all turned to attendees by default, can they be made a presenter during the presentation? During the live lesson, sorry. I don't believe so, no. So th th there's, there's no sort of changing off and on kind of thing? No. No, not, not to worry, as I say, that that's what these sessions are for, perfect, thanks. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's one thing that we started to utilise a little bit and started to look at. Um, is there anything else people want to sort of say, that's something that's really worked well for them? No, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, you can use the meeting options in Teams to um, make yourself the only presenter. That's, that's exactly what I did with this session. Um, if you do have access to the PDF, the, uh, the guide, I say if you don't, it'll be sent out in the links uh, in the chat after this session. Uh, there's a page in there, or a couple of pages that document how exactly you do that. So as a teacher, you can specify who can present, who's an attendee. For example, we have a situation myself where I, I team teach one of my lessons live now, and the teacher that I teach with, myself and him, we are presenters, but everybody else that comes into attendance is an attendee. So absolutely, absolutely spot on. Luke, um, Donald might correct me on this one. We've just been, we've discovered this morning that if you schedule a meeting through the calendar rather than through uh, schedule a meeting in a team, the yeah. students aren't able to chat. So we've advised our uh, teachers this morning to schedule only schedule meetings through a team rather than through uh, the calendar, which is one of the things we gave them the option to do before. Donald, if I've misinterpreted that, can you just come in? But I, I think that's kind of new information. Yeah, the actual setting is you can't students can't chat before the teacher joins the meeting. So if you schedule meetings in advance, they can't get in and chat prior. Um, only when the teacher's on board. And again, that's documented in the policy um, settings in Office 365 now. Perfect. Excellent. I mean, just sort of uh, add, add into that, we've had issues with the chat at our school because, not, not safeguarding issues, issues where we've wanted the chat to be available for our students because, as I said, that some of them utilise it as their, their means of interaction, like we are very much in, the, in our chat window now. Um, we've started to invite students to meetings via the calendar but using the, the channels themselves so inviting via channel now we somewhere have a policy that allows us to have chats that way I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that particular approach yeah that, that that's what we're we're doing if you apply the um, the magic set of policies um students can't chat in their own little meetings they can't create well, they can't create meetings anyway but anything scheduled through the calendar a locked end of story they can't do it only through teams and then they can only chat when there's, there's a teacher present which stops yeah. the issue of them piling in beforehand and saying you stink yeah no of course yeah which, which you never want on a, on a monday afternoon <laughs> um but no i say thank you for that i hope that information is useful to people that basically for those that are sort of following along there are policy settings that allow these sort of very uh, good questions to sort of be addressed um Forgive me once again, I've got a, 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 a Mr. Trigg. Apparently typing indicators was removed to include. Oh yeah, absolutely. What I was referring to earlier is when I say people are typing a response, it's difficult to tell. Um, it appears that they've been removed to increase bandwidth, which will no doubt beneficial to those that are accessing with a sort of weaker internet connection, which, which makes sense. So yeah, it's one of those. 
thinking out loud, one of the things you could do is if you do pose a question, you could get them to raise their digital hands as a I'm typing an answer right now kind of situation. So it could be a workaround given the, the platform that we have. Um, this one then is always quite interesting. Um, I, I do this as two parts. So it's, is there anything that's, that's not worked well for you or anything that you would like to work well for you going forward and perhaps myself or somebody in the, in the, in the meeting this afternoon can sort of advise or point you in the right direction for something. So is there anything potential on those lines? I believe we've got a hand up. Hi, hi, Fiona. Hi, can you hear me? I can indeed. How are you? Sorry, okay. took a minute to mute there. Um, I was actually going to just say, so I'm from an FE college. So we've been yeah, working yeah. with um, 16 to 18 year olds. Um, it's probably been about 50% take up of teams. I think very similar to yourselves, you know, at lockdown, we basically had to run with it. We had to teach ourselves and um, we set up team groups and everything. Um, but what has worked well and what I'm quite interested in is going back a bit when you said about um, getting them to um, you know, do written stuff at home and photograph and send it, because obviously we, you know, we, we, we do a lot of BTEC courses here and, and uh, because they use it on tablets and phones, then, you know, the typing of assignments that that has been a problem for us sending in assignments. So quite interested really in um, setting tasks, moving, moving forward. We want to use a lot more of Teams rather we use Moodle for a lot of uploading of work. And we think Teams is better for a start. We can see who's viewed the assignments rather than who's just submitting them, which is excellent. Um, oh, yeah. But moving forward, yeah, really. I mean, so how does that work when the send in written work. Do you give feedback on that? Yeah, absolutely. So I was even talking about the assignments feature, aren't we? Mm, yeah, the assignments yeah. feature, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so what they'll do, for example, when they submit work back to us, there's, there's an option which I can sort of detail later on, which um, allows students to either edit a copy of the document that you've set. It could be a worksheet, you want them to write the answers in the box, or it could be they're able to upload their own files um, to that. Now, if that second option is enabled, which I think it is by default, unless I'm mistaken here, um, they can just add an image file from a smart device um, to the upload of their work, and then you can provide feedback on the image as you would any other Word document kind of thing. So that is possible. What I'm going to quickly do is copy and paste. It's a, it's a YouTube video into the chat. Now, sorry for those that are in attendance. It is once again my, my Black Country tone speaking at you. But um, this video is me going through the assess through the assignment tool um, from both the teacher perspective, so the person setting the work, but also the, the student perspective as well. So them obviously receiving the work, completing it and receiving the feedback and sort of so forth. So the idea being it shows you from both aspects uh, what the assignment feature might look like. But yes, absolutely, you, you can provide feedback onto whatever they've uploaded. So what they uploaded, as I say, could be an image file. That's brilliant, thank you. No worries. So, um, as I say, I'll, I'll respect the question. Is there anything that people would really like to work well for them, but they currently can't get it working well or haven't really explored it too much, perhaps as somebody once again on the meeting that can assist with that? Excellent. Donald's just put something into the chat, which I think can be very useful for all of us. It's um, it's a link to guides, uh, a link to a guide, sorry, for forcing students to automatically attend a meeting as an attendee rather than a presenter. So as we say, I think somebody correctly identified earlier that you can use the meetings option to um, schedule so that they are only a um, da -da 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 -da, an attendee. But obviously, this make life a lot easier. Um, no one in the chat, the sharing of documents whereby students can type into your document as you're presenting it. So, so forgive me, is, it, is that a question or something that you found useful? I, I've got your hand up. Hi, you're OK. Hi, yeah. Um, I went to one of the training sessions and it showed you where as you're presenting a PowerPoint or a Word document, 
you can invite the students into that document. Now, me and my, one of my colleagues played around with it and we got it working. As long as you are uploading your, your uh, PowerPoint or your Word document into the files and you and your students open it from files, you should be able to see all their names appear and type in the document. But when I tried it today with my year nine students, they kept saying it was a read only document and they, they could see my name, but they couldn't type in it. And I'm just unsure how to, how to get that feature working. Yes, yeah, so, so, so the collaborative Word document, for example. Yeah. Um, so, so when you say follow, sorry to sort of keep going there, although I'm guessing, but Donald, do you have an answer? My, my so if you put stuff into the class resources, class resources, uh, classroom materials class folder, materials, yeah. yeah, that is read only. To make it collaborative, you need to stuff it into a general bit. just a normal no, folder. Yeah, not in class. classroom materials. I suspect if it's put into classroom materials, it's read only by design, and so that that's why they couldn't edit it. Brilliant, didn't know that. Thank you ever so much. That's really helpful. Sure, no worries. Thank you both. So, I say I'll open it back up. Is there any anything else we want to discuss or bring up or mention that they find it useful or not useful, anything like that? Just a quickie, um, preloading documents into Teams seems to work better than uploading it from your PC. Just that bit quicker um, when you're sharing desktop or, or sharing a PowerPoint. Um, so I'm trying to encourage us teachers to top load the documents into the team's file space first. Um, and then it's available in the right place for, for students to access later. That, that, that makes perfect sense. I, I know from my experience, if you've got a sort of an image heavy PowerPoint file, for example, obviously uploading it can take some time. So um, that's a really good spot point, a really good spot. Thank you. Right. What I will say is this, I'm conscious that it's nearly or creeping up to three o'clock and it's, it's three o'clock on a Monday as well. A um, few reminders, obviously this session has been recorded and a link to this will be shared amongst the attendees once it's generated basically. Uh, please forward that on to whoever you want. If you think there's something this has been really useful and you think, oh, I know colleague X might find some use from that, please, please do share it on. And I'll reiterate, I can be contacted via that email address and I'm more than happy to try and sort of provide help and support as and where I can. And being completely transparent, if I don't know the answer, I'll do my best to sort of forward you on to somebody who does. So, yeah. Um, what we'll say is, if you do have any further questions, I'm more than happy to stay on, stay on this meeting right now. If not, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, thank you all for your contributions. I've been really most helpful. I will stay on, but please feel free now if you need to or want to, to sort of say goodbye. And uh, if you need me, email me and I'll speak to you soon.